They both have infinitely many terms, but do they really have the same amount of infinitely many terms? That allows me to factor out the x minus y once we pair them up. That's the main concern, which I'm not sure. Okay, today is going to be different because I am not sure if this is correct. Here's the story. I was just trying to come up with some limit questions for you guys. Let's say we have x, y going to 0, 0. Yes, a limit for a multivariable function. Because I've been doing a lot of calculus with videos for you guys on the other channel, and I will have the link in the description if you want to check them out. And this is the function that I came up with. I have e to the x. And you know, when we are computing limits, it's only fun when we have indeterminate forms, such as 0 for 0. And when x is approaching 0, e to the 0 is 1 already, and I don't want to say minus 1 because that's just a like calculus 1. And I also want to have the y inside here too. So why don't we try minus e to the y? And on the bottom, let's just keep things nicer. Let's say x minus y, like this. Alright, so I came up with this limit, and I will say it might be easier to try to show a limit for a multivariable function does not exist rather than try to compute the value for it. So I was trying to find different paths and we will have to make sure we can find two paths that the limits along those two paths will be different. Then in that case, we can say the limit doesn't exist. But no matter what I try, I just cannot find two paths that give me different limits. So I really have to try to compute it. And this is the method that I thought about. Of course, this show is telling you what to do already, right? We will use the power series expansion for e to the x and also e to the y. And let me just make a note right here. The power series expansion for e to the x center d is 0 is equal to 1 plus x plus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial x to the third power and so on so on so on. And the general form is we add 1 over n factorial times x to n power and so on so on so on. And the beauty of this right here is that this is good for all x, meaning you can plug in square root of 2 into all the x's, this will be true. You can plug in negative pi over 17, this will still be true. So let's see what we can do with this. Right here, we have the limit as x, y going to 0, 0. Power series expansion for e to the x, which is just that. So let's write that down. And I'm just going to write it up to this term, and I'll just put on plus dot dot dot. Next, we will have to subtract the power series for e to the y. It's just this, and you change all the x's to y's. So we get 1 plus y, and then 1 over 2 factorial y squared, and let's just write it down up to here too. And then all divided by x minus y. Okay, cool. All right, so let's see, 1 minus 1, that's just equal to 0, that's good. And then next though, I'm going to just write this down one more time. Limit as x, y going to 0, 0. Notice here we have x, and then, of course, let's just get rid of this and that. Once we distribute the negative, we get x minus y. So let's put them together like this. Next, this minus that. We can first factor out the 1 over 2 factorial. And then we'll be looking at x squared minus y squared. And can we factor this? Sure thing, difference of two squares. We get x minus y times x plus y. Next, this minus that. And we can factor out 1 over 3 factorial. And then we'll be looking at x to the third power minus y to the third power. Here we can factor out the difference of two cubes. So we get x minus y, and then x squared plus xy plus y squared. 
and you can just keep on going. The next one will be x to the fourth minus y to the fourth. That's still factorable, and it still has x minus y as a factor, right? So this right here keeps on going, and then all over the denominator x minus y. And you know, everything has x minus y, so it seems that we can factor it out. So this right here, we have the limit, x, y going to 0, 0. And then let me just factor out the x minus y. So that means this term right here will be just 1. Next, we will have plus 1 over 2 factorial, and then x plus y. Next, we have 1 over 3 factorial times this. And so on, so on, so on. All over x minus y. And now, here is the best part, right? It seems like it. x minus y, x minus y cancel. So I was really happy about this. And the reason is because now we can just plug in 0, 0 into x, y. Notice this part has x plus y, so it will be 0. Likewise, all these terms, either they have all x or x, y or all y's. So plug in 0, 0, you always get 0 right here. In fact, the next part, once you factor it, you have x to some power and then x, y stuff to some power and then y to some power. So you will still get 0 as well. And it keeps on going. So you can see, we just have this term left, which is just 1. So it looks like the answer is equal to 1. And I'm pretty sure that's the answer. But what I'm not sure is if this step is legitimate. Ready? Can we really go from here to here? Because notice right here we put down only four terms and then we have the plus da da da. We have infinitely many terms. Likewise, we also have infinitely many terms. They have they both have infinitely many terms, but do they really have the same amount of infinitely many terms? That allows me to factor out the x minus y once we pair them up. That's the main concern, which I'm not sure if that is correct or not. So right here, I cannot box this answer because I really don't know. So I will box this right here. This is the main thing I want to discuss with you guys. So if you do know, if you have encountered situations like this before, if you have used such this method, or if you know this is for sure true, for sure right, or for sure wrong, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Because I have been trying to make a video on the methods of computing a limit for a multivariable function, which is not easy to do. It's usually easier to try to show a limit doesn't exist because you just have to find different two paths, right? But sometimes that's not easy either. By the way, quick note, right here, we are not allowed to say x is equal to y because that's not in the domain of this function. So this path is not allowed. We cannot just say x is equal to y, the denominator is equal to zero. So this right here does not exist. <sighs> so yeah, I want to put this as a method for that video, but because of my concern here, 